Les Salmas here, reporting uh, not from the NMRA convention in Hartford, but from uh, a from the Houstonic Railway of uh, Craig Bisgeyer. That's right. Okay. So how are you doing, Craig? I'm doing great, thanks. We've had a really great week at the convention and uh, saw a lot of really neat clinics, uh, made a lot of good operating sessions and all, and uh, now we're here, and I'm really excited to have you guys. Well, we're excited to see your railway. We've heard a lot about it, so uh, how about we get to it and you tell us what, what you got here. Sounds great. I'd love to. We're here at Wilson Point. Uh, would you give us a little insight on what's here? Okay. Basically, what you're looking at here uh, is the beginning of the railroad on the south end uh, at uh, the Long Island Sound. This is the end of the railroad, uh, and in 1892, the Housatonic was in very serious competition with the New Haven Railroad. Uh, what was happening is that at that time, the New Haven had all of their routes into New York City, uh, pretty much choking everything off, and all of the rest of the railroads in Connecticut were looking for ways to try and get their goods and their passengers to New York City, but it was very difficult because otherwise you had to go all the way up to Beacon, New York, over the bridge there, and then down, say, on the Erie or something along those lines. Uh, what the Housatonic did is they took over a smaller railroad called the Danbury and Norwalk, which ran, obviously, between Danbury and Norwalk. Uh, absolutely. And uh, what they did is instead of going on their original main line, which ran from uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, through Danbury, and then to um, Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, now they had direct access to a much closer port to New York City, and they started using this as their main line. And what they did was they ran all of their... Um, southbound traffic that was going that way, down here to Wilson Point where they built this very large uh, rail marine terminal. And a lot of traffic would go uh, by car float, which we see one of right here. Uh, cars would be loaded onto here and go to locations like New York City, Brooklyn, uh, Long Island, and New Jersey. Uh, and also there were ferries that would come up and uh, dock up here next to the uh, the, the, the pier, and they would uh, be loaded and uh, unloaded depending on what was going on. There were bulk stuff that came up. Uh, there were co uh, coal that came in, lumber and such. Uh, so there was a lot of traffic that ran through here. And uh, what happened was, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> what happened was uh, in 1892, uh, the Housatonic was, fight, like I said, fighting with the New Haven, mm -hmm. and they eventually were taken over by the New Haven in July of 1892, and that was when this whole area was basically completely shut down. Okay, well, actually, you're modeling this here. I'm looking at this Im amazing wharf. You got, how much wood have you got in there? And well, it's hard to say. Uh, basically, it's, it's all basswood, uh, which was all cut from very large chunks of it on my table saw. We came and we made all the strip wood. Uh, the Dowels that uh, make up the pilings, there's 2,400 of them, mostly put in by my friend David Ramos. Uh, it took about five months to build everything that you see here, from the pilings to the caps that go on top of them. Uh, the pier is actually made from eighth-inch plywood that's strung underneath it for strength, and then decked with uh, sty uh, sorry uh, basswood strips. Basswood strips. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is just amazing. You know, how about the water? How did you how did you do that? And again, tell us what kind of problems you ran into and what would you do well, if you had to do it over again? We certainly did have some issues with it. Uh, what we did when we first did this is we had all the pilings put in and we had painted the deck uh, a nice blue color in order to try to make it look like deep water here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a weekend where a number of my operators came by and we had a big party to actually pour all the water and uh, through some unfortunate communication uh, the envirotex which is the epoxy mm -hmm. that a lot of us use in order to represent water mm -hmm. uh, was mixed much too vigorously and ended up coming out very much like meringue so it was this big foamy mess and uh, we were all panicking and we kept we tried to pour it out and spread it out and hoping everything would be okay and it, it just looked like a wedding cake. It was, and we were sure it was just going to be a complete disaster uh, until one of my guys remembered, hey, wait a minute, are you supposed to go with a, a, a propane torch over the stuff in order to get any bubbles to release? So I ran into the back, and I got my propane torch out that I used for plumbing work mm -hmm. and started it up, and we, spray, we, we weaved it across the, f the foam, and all of a sudden it just collapsed right. and went right down clear again which was great and there was only a couple of spots on here where it didn't work out very well uh there was a couple of places down in the corner there where it's a little cloudy where we didn't quite get to it in time but other than that it ended up working out pretty well the other big problem that happened is that once the envirotex had dried uh it was this very large expanse and it was clear as a bell flat mm -hmm. and you could see the reflection of all the lights and that was just 
you know, it, that just couldn't work. Yeah, we couldn't work that. So we ended up coming back with it. And uh, we used a combination of uh, gloss medium gel and gloss medium liquid that we mixed together and then stippled on with paintbrushes mm -hmm. in order to get the wavy texture in the water. And I'm very happy with the way that that came out finally. Well, it looks great from, from my vantage anyway. And we're, we're looking here and it's still amazed at the size of this thing. And it's real great. Yeah, it's about 14 feet long and about three feet wide at its widest point. Amazing. Craig, this has been a real treat, you know. Thank you very much for having us. And the Housatonic Railway is just great. Well, thank you. It's really very kind of you to say so. It's been great having you guys here. And on behalf of myself and my construction crew of guys who have put endless hours of work into this, thank you very much.